Good morning, everybody. It's not morning, but it is 2.05 p.m. And this is the first I've picked up the camera today. I um, am busy here in the kitchen. I took the bone broth. There's two more jars I've already emptied from the freezer. It's chicken bone broth. And I've added cut celery, cut onions. I've got four chicken thighs left over here that nobody ate and two sweet potatoes. I won't use the sweet potatoes, but I will use, I'll take the skin off and debone these thighs and use the meat. And um, these Amish egg noodles. And also I'm going to put onion in there and some other things. I don't know if just yet. Garlic for sure. <laughs> um, and we're going to get going with that. So um, I'm just adding a can at a time of this uh, bone broth, chicken bone broth, as it um, gets nice and soft and I'm able to get it out. Not nice and soft, but I'm able to get it out of the jar and I drop the frozen in here and it goes ahead and just the thaws, thaws really quickly. So I'll show you more in a few minutes. I'm Kendra. This is my channel and I'm so glad you stopped by. If you're a regular, hi, hi. And if you're brand new, I hope you'll continue to come back around and see what we got going here every day. A little bit of everything, shopping, hauls, prepping, cooking, um, baking, organizing, all of that kind of thing. Lots of prepping. <laughs> okay. I'll show you a bit and again. Let's see if I can get one to plop out here. Yeah, I think it'll, there we go. So that's all I'm doing with each jar. Just giving it some warm water to thaw enough to release from the jar. And um, when these are gone, this is the last of my bone broth that I have prepared. So the next couple of times um, I get a chicken, I'll put bones away in the freezer and cartilage and whatnot. And then when I have a bag that I feel like is enough, I'll start a, a pot of new bone broth, put it in jars and freeze that or bags or whatever okay i got another one here that didn't have celery and onion in it um, it just landed and it caught it on top of the little bit of fat that's in there so i'll just i'm done with the carrots and the celery and now i'm getting started on an onion to go in here okay i put the um, onion in there. I only used a half, so there's a half an onion laying there still. Um, you notice I always use straight up and down, not with the bell curve or whatever you call that um, in the jar because I've had breakage when I use the curved ones. So here's, there's only one more jar after this. So that's in there now. And putting in the flavor. Okay, so here I have the last the last jar. I'm, I don't know if this is going to fit. Uh-oh. There we go. I didn't think it was coming out. <laughs> Had a section that I thought was still frozen stuck to it. Okay, so that's done now. I wanted to show you for a pot of soup that I'd like to last a while. I've got... Are these quart size? I, I'm sorry, I don't know my jar sizes and I can't see it through the yuck. I got some hot soapy water here. Um, so I got two of these large ones and they were full. And then I got two of the tall, thin, like quilted jelly jars. They're tall ones. And then I got two of the small, these are probably eight ounce jelly jars. And so um, I reuse the lids and stuff when it's for frozen stuff like this, but obviously not for well, I would, I would reuse a ring, but I wouldn't reuse a lid lid. Anyway, if I was actually canning. So that's that. And um, I'm going to put some garlic in this. I probably won't put more salt. I'll let them do that at the table if they would like. So I'm going to get busy cutting the chicken off the bones. Here is the bone broth, the um, onions, celery, and carrots. <clears throat> And I had already um, flavored the broth, so it's got a good bit of salt in it already and everything. And I'm going to let everybody salt at the table. I can't remember if I already said that. So I took the chicken off the bones. Here's the chicken I'm going to, um, I took the skin, you know, cartilage, all of that off. So this is just thigh meat. So as I cut through it, I'll make sure I don't miss any bones. And then I put the bones in a bag, a freezer bag, and put them in the freezer. 
And then, like I said, when I have enough, I'll pull them out, roast them, and then make bone broth again so I have more to replace what I used. Okay, all the chicken's in there now. So, again, we've got bone broth, carrots, celery, onions, and chicken broth, chicken broth, um, chicken from the thighs that I picked off and threw away the bones and the fat and the cartilage. I'll put them in the freezer, didn't throw them away. <laughs> I got a lot going on in my head. I just remembered my daughter. My granddaughter has horsey camp today, and I'm wondering if I'm supposed to pick her up from that or not. I'm going to call my daughter. Did I say I'm going to need a bigger boat? I am. Look at, and there's no way I'm going to get the veggies in there. I mean, really all I was going to put in was corn. Maybe I can make it. Maybe. I'll give it a try. I got all of it in. All in. I'm so proud of myself. And then I put the camera down and I thought, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> so I am switching to a bigger pan. Here we go. <laughs> right, so now they're going to bark. I just turned the camera on. I'm convinced electronics make noises that only dogs can hear. It's done. And now I can serve it whenever they're all ready. Hey everybody, I'm going to talk about groceries after the soup video. So if you hang on to the end, you'll see that where I'm talking about digital coupons and saving money and that kind of thing for your hauls and for your prepper pantries. And there may have been other people that already, um, you know, talked about this in the way that I'm going to. So if it's a repeat, I'm sorry you skip along. Um, but it just dawned on me um, yesterday when I was realizing what close attention the stores have on what I bought. Okay, the soup's done. All I had to add in the end was salt, pepper, a little more onion powder, um, and it's good to go. I'm done with dinner. I love nights like this. And by the way, our temperature here right now is maybe 65 degrees, so soup is fine. I know some of you are suffering with... Um, really big time heat and humidity. I'm really sorry to hear that. It's, I know how miserable that is growing up in Oklahoma, lived in Texas, lived in California. So yeah, yikes. Anyway, here we go. Um, it, this is from my Safeway. I already cut out a coupon. Um, Safeway is a store that we have here on the West Coast. Um, it's, you know, it's part, it's partners with Albertsons. So the Albertsons and the Safeway uh, flyers are the exact same flyers, but they have different manager specials and different, like one has a deli, one has a China West or China West, China Express, like that. So there's some differences. So on $5 Fridays, you can get these specials, you know, like sirloin steak, ground beef. There's, you know, $5 Fridays, June 17th only. This is obviously old. <laughs> no way. Yeah, that's last June 7, so it's over. Anyway, um, on down here to bread and all that. So, in order to get the $5 Friday specials or the Just For You digital only sales, and which um, it's becoming more and more that they do this where it's only for people who are going to give up their information. So what you have to do is give them your phone number and your name and your address. And when you come in, you either have a password, you know, click it in the keypad there, or most people use their phone numbers. If you don't have that, you don't get these special prices. If you do use your, your special code and you are signed up for this, you know what happens then, they keep track of what you bought. Now, in cases where there's a recall, like peanut butter, I was happy to have that because I got back, I don't remember what it was, $35 or something like that for that peanut butter that I was going to have to throw away because the company said to throw it away. Well, um, just be aware that they're tracking what you're buying and they know how much you're stocking. If this is something that you're keeping private from people because you don't want to attract a crowd, some people know. And I don't mean they're going to come get it. I mean, in, at some point, what if we go back to rationing? You know, like in the 40s when you had a coupon book and they controlled how much meat, fat, 
you know, um, butter, sugar, coffee, gas, all of that, that could absolutely happen again, not because of a war, but because we're struggling as a country to have what we need. So um, anyway, uh, <clears throat> I wonder if any of you had done much looking at how that worked. And last night while I was kicking it around and had nothing better to do, I went ahead and looked. And so it started in May of 1942 with gas rationing. I'll show you my notes. Gas rationing started in May of 42. Sugar came at the same time. It was the very first food that was rationed. And remember, we didn't have Hawaii as a state yet. And I don't know what was going on in Hawaii besides, you know, Pearl Harbor around that time. But it was probably not the importance of getting sugar to the mainland. Um, but anyway, um, then... in a well, that was like in May, and then in November, they added coffee. Same thing. Where did we grow coffee back then? Maybe, I think it was Hawaii, too. So um, then in uh, March of 1943, they added meats, fats, canned fish, cheese, canned milk, all of that. There was lots of running to the store when there were rumors that there was going to be... Um, another food added where people would try to buy as much as they could and there were these political cartoons and it was always this chubby housewife with her arms full of some product and then a skinny housewife next to her looking at her like oh what am I going to feed my family you know so <laughs> anyway um people were hoarding if they thought it was going to be on the list next and so what would happen is a lot of the store people would uh, you know, back then they weren't giant supermarkets, they were your neighborhood grocer. And he would demand you show the empty container, like the empty container of butter that you had or flour in order to get a new one. I don't know what that did because, you know, what we would do is probably dump it in another container, but that's what it said. So anyway, um, it was a big deal. And so the war ended by my calculations and reading here, in 1945, I don't know how true that is because I didn't look that up to make sure, but um, at that point, um, we didn't need to ration because it loosened um, things like meat and stuff like that we were sending to all the soldiers overseas, and we were able to buy as much as the grocer had locally for the local people. But the, the war ended in 45, sugar the first on the first food on the list remained on the list first on last off until 1947 now we can stock all the sugar we want but i don't know how long it's going to last you know will it last 3 years will it you know if we can it if we if we seal it in bags with one of those machines what can we do to make our sugar last even longer um it, mylar bags i guess i've heard you know so you might want to be thinking about that. Let's see, what else did I read? Um, oh, at this time, that's when people started having backyard chicken hutches and rabbit hutches because it was very, very patriotic if you um, didn't use um, all of or only um, most of your coupons. So people would do everything they could to try to, um, you know, stretch the meat. And by stretching the meat, it could be bunnies and chickens in the yard, you know, and I've eaten my share of rabbit. I like it. In fact, I've actually dispatched a rabbit once. I went to learn how to do it, and then I put the rabbit in my freezer and couldn't eat it. I don't know why. I Because I ate it when it came from the store. It was just that I killed it personally. I have a problem. But anyway, if I was hungry, trying to feed my family, you know I would do it. So anyway, Patriotism was a big deal. They started Meatless Tuesdays then. They started carpooling then. There was a political cartoon which said, um, if you're not carpooling, Hitler is riding with you. And it had a cartoon of Hitler in the passenger seat, this guy driving to work. So they started Victory Gardens. And they also started eating variety meats, mm, which were kidney, liver, brain, and tongue. Get it while you can. And so, that is my deal on that. So I just wonder, will it happen again? Could it happen again? And if it does, how different will it look? 
um, you know, the amount of, just because you could buy it doesn't mean you can be able to buy what you're used to buying. They really, really restricted it. It was like just so many pounds of meat per age. Women and children and babies got the first, men got the least, I guess, because of pregnancy and growing. You know, back then they didn't have birth control either. A lot of men were off to sea or whatever, though, so maybe they weren't having a lot of babies. They sure did, and they came back, you know, the baby boomers. But anyway, there was less available, and um, so anything you could do to help, will it, will it be that way? I've been saying and saying and saying, we need, we're going to have to get a really, really hard-sided, um, tough to get into hutch for chickens if we do it, though, because we have got bald eagle, hawks, coyote, weasels, raccoon. Um, we've got uh, cougars in the area. We've got all kinds of stuff in the woods here that bear. <laughs> so yeah, you don't, you don't know what's going to get in there and eat every one of them one day, you know? So we need to really put some thought into that. Surely there are other people that are in this situation that have good ideas. Do any of you have any good ideas? <coughs> What's your thoughts on this? I just thought it was fascinating, and I wish that I knew someone who was of an age who could tell me more about it than what I could find online. I'm going to stop because this is just way too long a video. If you stayed this long, I'm so happy. Thank you so much, and um, maybe we all ought to have a victory garden this summer. We really ought to. If you haven't, well, here we couldn't start yet because it's still in the 40s at night. It's just started to be in the 50s at night, and 40s is the kiss of death to a tomato plant. We could do cold crops, but we didn't. So anyway, our strawberry crops are all late. Our raspberry crops are all late. I'll let you go now. Bye-bye. See you later.